Imagine, if you will, after months of searching, bidding, and losing out on multiple properties, you're finally in escrow on the home of your dreams. You were one of three offers, and this time they picked you. You feel you've done everything right. You've even started to tell your friends about your big move. <laughs> and then you get the call. Your dream home just appraised for less than you agreed to pay for it. You're under contract at a million, and the appraisal came in at 950. You're 50,000 off. What do you do? I'll explain. In real estate, an appraisal is an opinion of value done by a state licensed professional. When you purchase real estate using a loan, there's almost always an appraisal. That's why most purchase agreements have appraisal as one of the contingencies. The bank will require it. The only exception is if there's a substantial down payment, one big enough to cause the bank to waive their appraisal requirement. This makes sense given that the bank's putting in most of the money. All they know about the property is the price you agreed to pay and what they see in the title report. In most purchase transactions, the property appraises at value. <laughs> Let's face it, there's no better way to determine the value of a property than to expose it to the open market and see what people will pay. But the bank's still gonna want an outside opinion confirming to the value. So, they hire an appraiser. The appraiser uses comparable sales and makes adjustments to justify the value. This can be problematic in a market where prices are increasing because the comparable sales are from the past when prices were lower. So what happens when a property doesn't appraise? Here's five options. The first option is the buyer can dispute the appraisal. All the banks have a process for this. You'll need to provide your own comps and give a good argument for the value that you're trying to argue for. The second option is the buyer can try a new lender with a different appraiser and perhaps more lenient appraisal requirements. I've seen this work before. And the third option is the buyer can move forward using the low appraisal. The thing is, they'll have to make up the difference in cash. So like in our original example, when the appraisal came in 50 thousand below the purchase price, the buyer needs to bring in an extra 50K. So think of it this way. If you're putting 20% down, the bank is really financing 80% of the appraised value, not of what you agreed to pay. And the fourth option is the buyer can just walk on the deal, especially if it's contingent on it appraising. You don't have to buy it if it doesn't appraise. So the fifth and final option is the buyer can ask the seller to adjust the price. The seller can say yes, the seller can say no, take it or leave it, or the buyer and seller can negotiate some middle ground and work something out. Are the parties confident of the value? Does the buyer have the ability to pay the agreed price? Does the seller feel confident that they can achieve a higher price? How soon does the seller need to close? How bad does the buyer really want it? Look, I know it's a lot and we're here for you. We've been through over a thousand real estate transactions and multiple up markets. We know what to expect and we know what to do. So if you have any questions regarding appraisals or anything else in real estate, feel free to reach out. Thanks for watching. This was fun for us to make and I sure hope you find it useful. Um, please like, subscribe, share, and make comments below. Uh, we're always looking forward to your feedback and see you next time.